What's going on, friends? It's Dr. Nessum, and I am back for another YouTube video. It's been a little bit, and the reason is because I was studying and taking step three, and then after that, I had a nice vacation planned, so I just got back from that vacation, and I will soon be starting two weeks of night shifts, which I'm not really looking forward to, but it should be interesting. I'll let you know how that goes. So I wanted to talk in this video about step three, how that experience went, hopefully uh, help some of you that will be eventually taking that exam. And then for those of you that are not in medicine, but are just interested in hearing about, you know, how there are many steps you need to take to become a doctor and what they are. I thought you may find it interesting. So what I just took is USMLE step three. This is now the last exam that you need to take to technically be licensed as a physician in the US. Now, if you're an international medical grad, you need to do a full residency and take this exam. In most states, technically, if you are a US grad, you only need to complete one full year. So an intern year like I'm doing right now, as well as pass this exam and you are able to apply for certification to be a licensed physician to practice independently. Now to get board specialization, that's when you have to go through a full residency, specialize in a certain area. For me, that's physical medicine and rehabilitation. And then you take a board exam after that. So I'll take the PMNR boards. And then if you want to subspecialize, so for me, I want to go into sports medicine, then I'd have to do a sports medicine fellowship and then take a sports medicine boards. But for now, we have completed, hopefully, fingers crossed that I passed, USMLE step three. So there was step one, which I took after my second year of med school. Now a lot of students are actually taking it after their third year of med school because it's now pass fail. It wasn't pass fail for me when I took it. Then I took step two and now step three, which you take usually during your first year of residency. So this exam, it's an exhausting exam. It's about seven hours the first day, which consists of six blocks of 40 questions. And then it's nine hours the second day, which consists of six blocks of about 30 questions and then 13 different cases. And so what I did to study was I did tons of UWorld questions. UWorld is definitely a great way to just get back into the flow of doing these style of questions. And they do a great job of emulating the real exam. You're not really always going to get the same question. So even if you do the full QBank, it doesn't mean you're going to get the same exact questions on test day, but you will start to pick up on those patterns. Remember how you approach questions and it, it will help you work on just your overall test taking skills and remember a lot of the clinical knowledge you might have forgot since being in your step one or step two studying. If you are able to take step two or step one close to step three, I would actually really recommend it. Unfortunately, that's not the case for most people because they take step two and then you're not allowed to take step three until you actually have a good period of time in your first year of residency to take it. And that's because you are required to take it while you're in residency. You're not allowed to take it, for example, if you're in the US while still in medical school. And then you got to figure out when do you have a time. So I had an easier elective, so I was able to take it now. But some of my peers took it earlier. Some of them haven't taken it yet at all. It really just depends. So going back, the first thing I did was lots of Euro questions. I also did Anki. I did the Dorian Step 3 Anki deck. And this was about... 3,500 cards or so, maybe slightly less, I don't remember. And that really helped me just remember a lot of the little random tidbits that I may have forgotten because it's just a lot of information on this exam, especially if you're not, you know, I haven't done ob gyn for example, really since my third year rotation in medical school, which because I did a research year was a while ago. So I need to remember all that information. Additionally, that deck has, I think, two to 300 cards that are dedicated to step one content because step one content definitely does show up on this test. Do you think you're done with it? Well, think again. So for this exam, especially on day one, I had a a lot of questions that it would ask about a disease. You'd have to figure out what disease it is. Then it would ask, what's the treatment for that disease? But the answer wouldn't just be the names of the medications. It would be the mechanisms of action of those different medications. So even if you knew the right diagnosis, you knew what drug you should use to treat it. If you didn't know the mechanism of action of those drugs, you'd still get that question wrong, which is could be frustrating because it's like, you know so much and you still get it wrong, but just go through the basic mechanisms of action. I use the Dorian deck, which I really found helpful. And then honestly, some people say, just go through all the first data. I didn't have that much time to like read the first aid in depth again, first aid for step one. So I just quickly glanced at it a couple of days before. But because I did that deck, I was basically doing that already. So choose one or the other. I like Anki because there's a lot of repetition. And I think it did a good job of getting 80 to 90% of those step one questions. So interestingly, the multiple choice was the thing I was most concerned about. And I felt like that went better than the cases, which I actually felt most confident in. And now these cases are actually something you've never seen before. So three weeks after my test, I've 
literally never really done any of these cases and it was a brand new skill I had to learn. Now, it's not terribly difficult once you get the hang of it, but you, I would say to at least get 40 practice cases in. And you could use the ones on UWorld or I use ccscases.com. I thought that they did a much better job of giving you the answer explanations and scoring your test, which UWorld doesn't really do. And so I recommend out of the resources I used, it was really just UWorld, Anki, and ccscases.com. And that was a really good overview of everything that I needed to hopefully do all this test. I didn't get my score back. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, I took it in January and usually it takes four weeks, but I'm not getting it back for about two months. So I won't find out until late March. So fingers crossed. Now, I was feeling good about the cases because I had done a bunch. I probably did like up to 60 cases by the time that my test came around. And you start to get a hang of how to approach the cases. I might make a video specifically on cases um, and how to do that. But really, you are approaching it like you're a physician and you see a patient and you need to do a diagnostic workup as well as therapeutics, as well as counseling and vaccines that you need to give the patient before they leave if that's something. So for example, you might have someone coming in with, to the office with chest pain. Well, if they're in the office, you might want to get an EKG if that's available. You want to get a CBC, CMP. Uh, you could put all these labs in and it's a simulation. So you'll be able to get those results back. And then let's say the person's having an ST elevation MI. Well, you're not going to want to keep them in your office. You're going to want to transfer them to the ED immediately. So you can transfer them there. You can get appropriate additional labs in the ED. And for someone like that, you're going to want to send them to the cath lab right away. And so you're able to do all these different things. And you really need to be complete in how you approach your orders. So for example, let's say you knew that they were coming in with chest pain and it was an ST elevation MI, you still want to be able to rule out other possible causes of the chest pain. So if maybe they had a fever, you might want to send cultures. You might want to order a chest x-ray to look at the lungs. You need to be very complete. And the way I approach it, as long as you're not doing anything invasive, I would err for the purpose of this test, not real life, on the side of over-ordering. So I was feeling really comfortable with those. And then ironically enough, on my actual exam, I felt like that section was a lot harder harder than my multiple choice. And I thought it was going to be completely the other way around. I just felt for whatever reason, my cases were like not the bread and butter cases. I had some cases that were like essay cases that were a little bit tricky, some pediatric cases where I felt like I was doing everything right, but I couldn't figure out what the true diagnosis was. I had another case that I felt like I got the right diagnosis, but it was still the case usually ends if you do everything right. And it wasn't ending. And there was definitely things that I was missing. Maybe that was a further workup that I hadn't put in. And so overall, I felt a lot less confident on the cases. And so that's been in my head ever since. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that that's only about 25% of the test, I think. And I had good habits with the cases. So I knew like what to order, how to order, you know, counseling vaccines at the very end, which is something that you don't do as much. And so I'm hoping I was able to get enough partial points plus the multiple choice that it's going to be fine. But it's just funny. This is similar to when I took my MCAT. I thought that I bombed the chem phys section, which was the first section. I was like, oh no, my test is over. Went to the bathroom, splashed water on my face and was like, I'm going to go back in there. I'm just going to crush the other three sections. You know what? I know I bombed that one, but it's okay. And then with the curve, that ended up being my highest score section. So you never really know, but I was a little bit disappointed walking out of that test class, feeling pr much better than I thought I would throughout because this is a hard test. A lot of residents don't have too much time to study for this exam. And so most people are really doing their best, of course, to do well, but to pass. And so I was feeling decent throughout most of the tests. Like surprisingly, I felt better on the multiple choice than I thought. And then I got to the case. I was like, all right, this is my time to shine. And then I felt worse. So you never know. These things happen on the exam. I just want to tell you a little bit about my experience. I took the test. It was a long two days, the longest you've taken so far. Cause I think step two is like nine hours. Step one is eight hours. And then step three was 16 hours. So it was definitely a lot. I did it back to back. You could actually separate the days. So if you want to do day one and then have a two day break or something in between and then do that. But I had my vacation planned and I just wanted to knock it out. So I did the days back to back and I got it over with. Hopefully, hopefully I don't have to take it again. And then I went to Park City, Utah for a skiing trip. And then I went to Vegas with a bunch of my friends. So that was very fun. And now I'm back in reality. I'm about to hit uh, two weeks of nights and then two weeks of floors. And what's crazy is this intern year is already slowly starting to come to an end. So I hope you enjoyed that update. 
that was my step three experience. If you have any questions, I'd love if you drop them below in the comments. Please, please subscribe. I'm really trying to grow the YouTube this year. This is a really passion project of mine. It's really important to me. And if you're getting any value from these videos, I really love for you to just quickly, quickly click that subscribe button. It'll take you no time. It's free of cost to you. And I'll see you in the next video.